good morning or I do this every time. I film these in the morning. They're posted in the evening, so good evening. Today, I'm gonna to be going through everything I got while I was at Old Sled Works and Bedford Street. So, the first thing I wanna do is actually show something I got from myself. This was a really, really nice gift, and I'm super excited to hang it. I'm trying to show it off without a, <laughs> just showing a picture of myself showing you the mirror. But this actually came from an old uh, cigarette vending machine. Super freaking Art Deco. I am obsessed with it. As soon as I saw it, I kind of gasped. I've always loved old cigarette uh, memorabilia as well as the old like candy and cigarette v vending machines. I just think they're the neatest thing ever. And these mirrors actually came on the vending machine. So it was a very, very, very thoughtful gift. And I am really excited to hang it in my personal collection. I already have a spot set aside for it, I think, uh, in my in my vanity room. So I will make sure to send uh, the gifty a picture when it's all hung correctly. I gotta move some stuff around first. It's kind of crazy in there. I don't buy a lot of Christmas ornaments because I just feel like um, they are not high profit. I usually buy them for like $2 and sell them for like seven and they're small. Sometimes they get lost when I buy a lot of stuff, not like in my office, but in route to, um, I've definitely accidentally thrown a couple things out before or thought I've thrown things out and found them later. But this little hard plastic Santa ornament, I could not resist. It was $4. Like I said, I will not make much off of it, but I just found it was kind of unique. I, I don't think I've seen one of these like this before. At least if I have, it's been um, overpriced and I haven't paid much mind to it. But for $4, I scooped this one up. Then I also got a couple more little elf ornaments. These were $5 each. These are definitely on the harder to find side. Uh, I got this one, which I'd never had before. Again, it's that hard plastic. It is marked. It's Irwin USA. Now, if Irwin sounds familiar to all you kitschy people, it's because Irwin also makes the squeak toys. So, um, there's a lot of really, it's kind of got like the same facial expression as a lot of their squeak toys too. They make some really cute ones. And then I also got this uh, elf. Now I've had this one before. This is not Irwin. I cannot remember who the maker is. I've seen it. It's one of the more common ones, but it is harder to find at a good, decent price, especially for resale. So for $5, I scooped this one up as well. Moving forward, Roseville. I am not like the biggest pottery person. I can appreciate it, but a lot of it's not really my style. However, Roseville made these anthropomorphic bug planters. There's a couple variations. They're definitely harder to find. This one I paid $16.50 for. I was super excited. Um, I've had it once before. I want to say off the top of my head, it sold for 54, but of course that includes my US shipping and fees and all that stuff. So, you know, I'm not gonna be able to make three times the amount. However, it's such a great item and it's such a popular uh, maker that, you know, on the harder to find side for under $20, I kind of couldn't leave it behind. It was originally 22 and I was lucky enough to get the little bit of discount there. This one actually kind of surprised me. The f like the body itself looked original, but something about the face kind of looked like a reproduction from afar. I only paid $5 for it. Now it is marked Japan. I know that Lefton, Napco, and Yusugo, as well as a couple other makers, I believe Fine A as well, all had these little angels. Um, they do have the makers information on the sticker. They're not just marked Japan. Um, but for $5, I couldn't resist. Now the other ones do have more kind of like cutesy kitschy faces, but again, for $5, I mean, those ones sell for like anywhere from 28 to 40 bucks a pop, usually average. So now I won't sell this for anywhere near that, but I just felt like it was a quick flip for Christmas time. These kind of sugar trimmed angels, uh, Christmas bells, usually sell pretty quickly for me if they're priced correctly because there's definitely an abundance of them except for of course the rare ones these funny guys were marked as mice but i do believe they are koala bears this salt and pepper shaker set i paid five dollars for i just had never seen it before and i was pretty convinced they were koalas i could be wrong 
but it looked pretty koala-ish to me. So snagged those up. I also went ahead and got these. Now, I usually see these guys in the giraffes or the dogs. I don't usually see the deer. Um, there's many variations of them. For these ones, I paid $5 as well, which is a really good deal. Uh, they're in relatively good condition too. So I was pretty excited about those. Deers are always a good item to pick up. So I had a moment with these. These I paid $6 for. I just kind of thought they were kind of cool, honestly. Interesting. Anyway, uh, I paid $6 for these and won't sell them for much, but I'm a big uh, car person and I just thought they were different. I always like to pick up things that are different. This was probably the most surprising item I found while I was at Sledworks. Now it does have a little bit of damage. I saw the price tag and didn't inspect too, too carefully because I was like, oh my gosh. This was only $7. Now, it does have a little uh, situation happening down here as they usually do with this clear vinyl or vinyl in general, I should say. I mean, the thing has some age to it, so it's fair, but the inside was in really good condition. Bags by Gary, made in Japan. Um, these ones that have kind of like the scenes underneath, a lot of them times they have flowers or she's seat. I can never say that seashells underneath just really fun. And they're usually on the pricier side. So for $7, I won't sell this for, um, top dollar because of the little cracking in the, uh, spot right there. But the straw underneath is in good condition, which is really what counts. And the lining and the clasp is all there. Super good bargain on this one almost forgot last thing i got was only five dollars now i had to buy this random mug to get it i'm not sure how i feel about it it's a cool shape but i'm not so sure about the message however it had this sticking out of it and i was like oh my gosh i'm not sure what that was about but this one is supposed to have a uh what's it called a string that hangs and you can hang it from your mirror in your car now i have one in my volkswagen Mine's in a little bit better condition. She's kind of got a, like a mohawk situation happening. Some of her hair is a little askew and she's supposed to technically have like a little see-through nighty gown, night, nighty gown, night gown, nighty, either way uh, on her. Now I've sold these before in the original packaging in perfect condition. They sold for about $49. The prices are kind of all over the place for these. Um, there's different versions and different ages. This one's on the newer side. It's not the absolute original. There's one that was made that was that should be marked 1964, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. But either way, for $5, I was super excited. Risque is one of my favorite things to find. Next up, I went to Bedford Street and I found a bunch of Holt Howard. First off, I found these guys. Now, this isn't a very high selling set. I love the tall salt and pepper shakers always. This one's on the more common side, but they were only $5 and they were in really great condition. The last few I've seen have been kind of beat up or missing its mate. So for five bucks, this was a steal. Now they are Commodore Japan, but they are Hold Howard design. I love a good spaghetti poodle, especially when it's pink or has rhinestones. And it's even better if it has both. This one wasn't in the best shape. It's got some glue residue. Uh, this one is a Lefton poodle. And I can kind of tell by their faces. They have a pretty unique expression on uh, the left in ones and there's the number on the bottom this one was six dollars so for six bucks i was like who cares if it's a little dusty it's pink and it's got the rhinestone collars and it's a name brand maker so i scooped that up super excited about this one i believe this is davar d-a-v-a-r there's a f i could be wrong there's also like a use ago united cat uh united China and Pottery's company version. Th this is the this is the mark I'm looking at now. They are a distributor, so there's different versions of it. There's ones where that she's on a bicycle. There's a planter version. There's one where she's got an umbrella. Um, at first, I thought this was that version, except I realized that she didn't have a hole in her paw, so she's not actually missing anything. There's one, a planter where she's pushing a cart. There's a whole bunch of them, and they usually sell pretty well. This little figurine was only $7, and we love a good anthropomorphic cat. Also, these little rubber elves. 
These are kind of hard to find. They are Josef Originals. Now the ceramic Josef Originals sell for a lot of money, some of them. They look very similar to this, except these are the rubber ones. These don't sell for that much, but they usually sell quick. And like I said, they're harder to find, especially at resale prices. So this one I only paid $5 for. It's got a little bit of paint loss, but we're not mad at it. I'm pretty sure everybody who watches this by now realizes what a sucker I am for fuzzy ceramics. I didn't even care that there was some paint loss on these. They were only $5. I won't sell them for much. I've had them in pristine condition and they've sold for, I believe, $24, $25. But I just love their little faces. They are by Napco. They have some damage, but again, for $5, a little fuzzy ceramic Santa Claus set is pretty hard to find. And I'm sure somebody can get creative with these. I mean, one's in good condition. You could even, you know, some of these people who do the vintage crafting, I blows my mind the things they do with their dioramas and their wreaths and things like that. So I'll just like put an easy ready to go price sticker on these for anybody who uh, might be wanting a cute little fuzzy Santa in their life. Here's another set I was really excited to find. I paid $6 for these. I was mostly excited though, because the paint is in such good condition. A lot of these uh, black and red paints really don't last up over time. Look at the little hat, so cute. So for six bucks, they say ducks. I'm gonna call them penguins. I kind of feel like, kind of feel like they're penguins. Now I've seen this set before, but the paint was in such rough shape that I didn't even really do a double take. So excited about their little polka dots and I love the detail on her beret and anything winking. I guess it's kind of winking. Maybe they're just lazy, lazy penguins. <laughs> Here's another set that's kind of hard to find. Now I see them a lot, but it's hard to find them at a decent price. These, these I only paid $3 for. Uh, I've sold them anywhere from, I mean, I've sold them cracked and chipped for more than that. So, you know, this one does have a little tiny nick on its ear, but for $3, I was like, hey, somebody, somebody's gonna snatch these up. Every time I post them, they go almost instantly. So there was one thing I left behind that I'm kind of like, why did I leave that? It was this celluloid reindeer. It was $12, but the thing is that was so rare about it is one it was in perfect condition a lot of times they have like holes or something in it and two it was colored it was kind of purple and the, the colored reindeer are hard to find now there are these little rubber ones now when you see these in colors you snatch them up period um, a lot of those they do come in colors they're just that rare to find a lot of them uh, are pink and blue they sell for good money now, there's so many different variations of this little uh, rubber deer. This set I found for $15. So, I mean, it was kind of crazy. They are made in Japan. There's like a version that the rubber isn't as thick and the facial features are less defined and they don't have the glitter. So I usually sell these around $11 each just because when I pick them up, I usually get them when they're in perfect condition. It's really easy to find these when they're, uh, they have paint loss or the version that's a little thinner. I mean, obviously you can't feel the thickness of the rubber through the uh, camera here, but they are very defined and in great condition. These usually go very, very quick and four for five to, uh, $15. I mean, that was a huge steal. There's one more thing I got and I have been going back and forth, back and forth about it. So let me grab it. I got not one, but two of these little bobby pin holder girls. Now these are Hold Howard. It's a different manufacturer. It's Commodore Japan, but they are Hold Howard designed. I couldn't believe when I saw these. I've never even seen them in real life before. $5 each, I freaked out a little bit. Oh my gosh, and I love their big eyes. Hold Howard uh, did do designs that were manufactured by Commodore. You most commonly see it in a lot of their Christmas stuff, which is of course what Hold Howard is known for. These bobby pin girls are really hard to find. They even have their original magnets, so the bobby pins hold. 
Now I've only seen two of these online. I was trying to kind of figure out what a reasonable price to put on it is because I know how rare they are. But the two people who had them listed had a bunch of wrong words and keywords in their uh, description. They had a lot of question marks. They didn't really know what they had and they ran it as auction and one person had it on Etsy and you know sold it for a couple of bucks. They had a bunch of question marks in their listing. I'm still on the fence of what I feel like is fair because I know exactly what they are and I know how hard it is to find the little pixie girls and the bobby pins. So I'm gonna continue to do my homework on them. But either way, for $5 each, I made out good. So at the end of the day, I ended up spending $126 in total, which is great. I really like those days where I keep it around the $100 mark, especially when I find this much great stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and list this stuff and I will see you guys tomorrow morning.